Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I would like to talk to you about a great camera and uh, in my opinion it is a unique camera and that would be the Fujifilm GFX 50S. Now that is a medium format camera and uh, I've got a comment a few uh, weeks ago on my channel, you know, to uh, if I have the possibility to review uh, medium format cameras and I told to, the, to my follower, you know, uh, that uh, it's very difficult to um, to um, to get my hands on these kind of cameras because usually they are very expensive and they don't lend me, you know, for testing, you know, because I'm, my channel is not big enough, so they will they will give it to me. But anyway, Fujifilm is not that kind of company that they uh, they would do something like that. Anyway, so um, but. I had the possibility because I went up in Dublin in the camera shop and uh, they let me to play with the camera for um, how long I want, you know. So I made some photos, I made test shots and um, I will show you in my computer those test shots as well. And I was playing with the camera for pretty long over there. And uh, I have to tell you my opinion about this camera. Now, this is a medium format camera, which is actually uh, not the Hasselblad size, because the, the very expensive Hasselblad cameras, they have a little bit bigger size than this. This is kind of the Pentax uh, 645Z size. And uh, Pentax Fuji use this, uh, this sensor size. This is a smaller version of medium format. Now, the price is 6,500 euro in um, most of the places, you know, $6,500 in United States. In Europe, it's kind of 6,500. Uh, if you want to buy online, gray market price, it can be about 5,500 euro. I know a place in um, online where you can buy that, you know, for 5,500. Because being a medium format camera, the crop factor is 0 0.79, 0 0.8. Well, you know, the crop factor applies when you go from full frame size, which is the 35 millimeter size, and uh, you go uh, down to crop size or, uh, or micro four third size, you apply a crop factor, you know, to one or uh, sorry, 1.5 or two, uh, respectively for APS-C and micro four thirds. If you go up to medium format, you have to apply also a, a crop factor, but in reverse. So you will apply in 0 0.79 or 0 0.8 crop factor because uh, kind of the standard is the 35 millimeter format and that's why you have to apply a negative crop, fa crop factor, sorry, a reverse crop factor. Now, that means the example that a 110 millimeter uh, f2 lens, let's say, on medium format, it will act like an 85 millimeter f1.4 lens on a full frame camera. Roughly, it might be a little bit of a difference, but not big, something like that. So um, uh, the build quality of the camera is just like Fuji build quality. You can't complain about anything. This camera is surprisingly light, even with the with the lens, you know, on it. And I had a, a big, pretty big lens on it, you know. And even with the lens on it, you know, it was it was kind of like a chunkier DSLR, you know, with the lens. So it's it's really really good you know the form factor i like it the build quality is excellent i mean i can't complain on anything i tell you that viewfinder on the top you know you can you can uh, turn the viewfinder you can turn around you know and tilt it up and down it is a brilliant idea and you can also remove the viewfinder if you don't need it you know but that's that's another uh, another thing so the the build quality is great tilty touch screen like the xt2 but it's not really fast when you uh, when you touch focus on the on the screen. The camera is pretty pretty good in focusing. I mean, point to point focusing it was fast enough. Usually, medium format cameras they are not really fast. They are kind of slow. But in this case, this camera it's pretty fast. I mean, it's um, it's uh, for a medium format camera it's pretty fast. But when I touched and on the screen, on the back screen, because you have the possibility, you know, to, uh, to set that you can touch and the camera will focus on the point. And when I touched, you know, it was kind of a lag, you know, when it was like one second, one and a half second until the camera, I touched and the camera, whoop, got over there, you know, so it's, but for a medium format camera, it's pretty good, you know, it's, it's not an issue. Now, 
superb ISO performance. I tell you something. Until 12,800 uh, ISO, the images are great. And I tell you, they are great. I mean, you will see on my computer, you know, when I get into my computer and I show you. I made a few shots, you know, on in the shop actually, because I, I obviously it was a 10,000 euro gear, you know, in my hands. So they didn't let me bring out from the shop, you know, but I was playing in the shop, you know, with the camera. And I tell you something, the 1208, uh, 12,800 ISO, it is great. It's, well, it's a medium format camera, so it's not a wonder. Slow continuous focus, but fast point-to-point uh, -point focus. This, like I said before, you know, with the touch to focus uh, 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 thing, you know, the continuous focus is not really fast, but this camera is not for sports photography, is not for, this is for a portrait, for a landscape, for studio work. And over there, you don't really need fast focus. I mean, you can, you can focus even manually. You know, that's not a big issue. So this camera is not aimed for sports photography. Continuous focus, it's working, it's okay, but it's, it's nothing uh, which will blow you away. So it's not that kind of a camera. But there is great face detection in it. And I have to tell you that the camera was, was detecting and finding the face and focusing on it, no problem at all. As many times I focused, never missed focus. So it, it's, it's great. Face detection is okay on it. Now, I made JPEG images, you know, because uh, raw images, they are so big, you know, and so I didn't want to, um, uh, to mess with raw images. And anyway, I like very much the Fuji JPEG images straight out of the camera. This is the first company, the Fujifilm, where I really like the, the JPEG images. Before, I always shot in raw only. And even now, if I do something serious, I shoot in raw. But if I do something... Um, just uh, for family or for myself or another page job, I will shoot in JPEG because editing the JPEG, it's, it's okay. It's not that bad, you know, and you don't print so big. Anyway, with the GFX, obviously, if you will do a paid gig, you know, you have to shoot in RAW and you have to edit your photos in RAW. But the JPEG images are unbelievably good, I tell you. And now let's get into my computer and I will show you those photos. And I will, uh, I will show you what I mean when the ISO performance is good and the JPEG images are unbelievably good. So let's get into my computer now. So we are in my computer now and uh, let's open up Zoner Photo Studio. And you can see over here the, the images. Now I will show you a few uh, good few images over here because I have plenty of them. Now, like I said, this was done in the camera shop up in Dublin and uh, they didn't let me to go out with the camera because it was really, really expensive gear. And I honestly, I didn't want myself because if something happens, it would be a big problem for me. So I was playing around in the shop and I made a few photos over there. And I did try though the ISO performance. And uh, like I said, it was no light because it's a dim shop, you know, over there. It was no good lighting conditions, but this is where the medium format cameras will shine. So, uh, first of all, I will show you a few images where I did try the minimum shutter speed. Now, if you, if you know there is an unwritten rule with the minimum shutter speed that your shutter speed has to be equal with the, with the millimeter, the focal length you are using. Now, if you use a focal length of, uh, let's say, uh, 85 millimeter, which in this case is 110 millimeter lens, you can see up here the EXIF data is 110 millimeter ISO 1600 and 1 250th of a second. Now, that photo is over here, this photo. So, uh, a 110 millimeter lens would be 85 millimeter f2 would be f1.4 kind of on a full frame camera and in this case the minimum shutter speed with a portrait should not be less than 85th of a second now this is obviously a 51 megapixel sensor and uh, you can see that the high resolution sensor how it, it emphasizes all the small little movements and why it is very important to have great shutter speed and I will demonstrate now this photo let's start from the beginning okay this photo you can see over here that the photo looks pretty well I mean there is no um, nothing you know you can complain about this but when you this is you can see 185th of a second f2 ISO 400 
and 110 millimeter. Now, if you zoom in 100%, you can see that there is a little bit of motion blur. You can see that it is not really in focus. The photo is extremely clean. There is no IS, uh, there is no noise at all in the photo, but it's not really clean. Now, like I said, this was a stationary subject. Now, look, it might be that my hand a little bit moved or something, but I can have very steady hands. I guarantee you that. And in this case, you know, it didn't really help. I mean, one uh, 85th of a second and you can see the foot. They, when you look just like that, it, you don't see that. But when you zoom in 100%, then you can see that the photo is not 100% clean. It's kind of a little bit of motion blur in it. Now, if we go up to 190th of a second, one second over here, we go up to 190th of a second. This is 190th of a second. Now, 190th of a second is a little bit better, but still not as good as it should be. You can see that it is in focus because look the jacket down here it's already out of focus and the face is in focus you know you can see on the hair as well that it's the most is in focus over here this side you see over there it starts to fall off immediately but because it's a medium format sensor you know the depth of field is really shallow but the shutter speed is not big enough with one ninetieth of a second so let's go even further and let's get to one two hundred fiftieth of a second this is one two fiftieth of a second f2 iso 1600 now 1600 iso is still nothing for a medium format camera and you can see over here that 1600 this is clean you know it's no no noise at all but you can look at these details and sharpness you know it's unbelievably sharp i tell you look at these details in the hair i mean it's unbelievably sharp i tell you. look at the fall of how how shallow is the depth of field now you can see over here that the eyebrows are in focus 100 percent but the eye already is just a few millimeters behind the eyebrow and is not as much in focus as the eyebrow the, the the bigger the strongest focus point is on the eyebrow and you can see that the nose the tip of the nose is already getting out of focus again so the, the depth of field is really really shallow with this uh, with this camera and lens obviously when you look just like that you don't notice that now this is one two fiftieth of a second. Now let's compare side by side. This is one eightieth of a second, and this is one two fiftieth of a second. And just see the difference uh, <clears throat> between the two. Now look at this difference. If you uh, if you uh, just zoom in just like that, you don't really see a big difference between the two. But when you zoom in hundred percent, then you will see the difference. Look at the eye. Look at the eye and the nose and even the mouth. If you look at the mouth, look, it's you can see a strong difference. This is one to fiftieth of a second. It's much, much sharper because the shutter speed was uh, was bigger. Now, I don't say that it must be one to fiftieth of a second, but in my opinion, it has to be one one fiftieth of a second, one hundred and fiftieth of a second. It should be with this lens in order to be really sharp. Now, let's see the ISO performance because now until now you can see that the fall off is great the out of focus uh, uh, background is brilliant i mean we are talking about a medium format sensor here you know it's 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 really really great it's no no point to uh, to complain now let's see a little bit we go further and we see some different isos this is still 1600 oh, I, i'll show you um this is a uh, um black and white you know the camera applies a filter automatically a black and white filter and this is a black and white filter you know it does the jpeg in black and white and in in color in the same time so uh, this is uh one second it's really interesting because the how it numerates the the photos you know the number of the photos it will change you see this is 79 this is 80 this is 81 82 so it, it's not like the two photos are the same number no it's different number anyway so uh, let's go back over here and see one photo with 3200. Now this is 3200 uh, ISO and let's see a little bit over here the noise. Now obviously we uh, I a little bit overexposed this photo over here with the light just to see the noise on the highlights as well. 
you don't see at all 3200 it's clean i mean there is nothing to see in it i tell you this 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 it's like iso 200 on a on a full frame camera there is nothing in it a little bit of little bit of very 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 fine grain but this this doesn't have any noise noise reduction you know just what the camera applies automatically so um let's go further oh this this is not good this is when it's uh she was blinking you know this is six thousand still six hundred now let's see this is this is twelve thousand and eight hundred iso and one thousandth of a second and f2 now this is twelve thousand eight hundred iso now i tell you something for twelve thousand eight hundred iso this is unbelievably good and look at these these details in the noise you know i mean there is noise now you can see the noise but still you know it's unbelievably good and if we go to editor and let's uh, let's see zoom in a little bit yep let's see and then apply noise reduction on it just a second the photo is really big and the, the software is a little bit uh, it takes a bit longer than than usual now look at that noise reduction apply if i apply this noise reduction you don't see any noise i tell you now you can blow up this image till the uh, uh, billboard size you know and you don't see anything look at those details 12800 iso with noise reduction it is unbelievably good i tell you and like i said these are jpeg files these are not the raw files you know if you play with the raw files it's even better i guarantee you that no, i'm not saving the, the noise reduction this is uh, again 12,800. yeah yeah that's the maximum i i made 12,800 i made because in my opinion you don't really go further than that you know now this on the other photo it was a little bit overexposed you know the photo this is not uh, uh, overexposed this is normally exposed you can see over here the the histogram that is normally exposed nice and even now i tell you this 12800 iso i mean you look at that 100 percent crop you know it's 110 percent uh, this is 100 percent crop i mean unbelievable this sensor is unbelievable i tell you now obviously it is an expensive camera 6500 euro but in the same time if you need it it's very good now i will make a video about comparing these images with the xt20 images which is aps size sensor and i will show you the difference between there is a difference obviously because we are talking about medium format but uh you can see over there in that video if uh, you need or not you know the the medium format now i hope that this video was helpful to you guys i hope that you liked it if you liked it please like and subscribe and share my videos and uh, if you have anything to ask any question or if you want to add something to this video feel free and leave a comment down below and other than that i wish you a great day and i'll see you in the next one take care guys you're a superhero